Right, coming back, we're going to show you the innards. Um, very little, you may say. Here, the black coil, that is the induction coil. That's the, that is the transformer, the coil that provides side tone. This is the, you hear your voice back when you speak into the other uh, transmitter, it comes back on the receiver. The idea is to let the person know the phone's alive and also has the, the properties of making you speak a bit louder or so, that's what I was told. On it you've got your ohmage, 28 ohms, 30 ohms. And I think that's the actual turn numbers, 1500 turns, it looks like it's 1100 turns, and the connections at the end. There you've got windings coming out at both ends, yeah, it's obviously a tapped coil. I haven't, I haven't got a circuit diagram or schematic of this, but uh, it looks like this. It's um, the coils are tapped. Your various connection strips underneath. Don't look too close at the wiring. This is one that hasn't been uh, restored yet. It's just a case of it going, and I left it as it was, but. It is one that should really, and it wants being nicely done. The large grey box is a capacitor, probably two microfarads or thereabouts. And the purpose of that, well, they sometimes had two, two built into one. The, the first reason was to allow AC to pass but be a block to DC when ringing comes in. To ring your bell. The bells actually ring on AC but it is a block to DC um, and secondly the other capacitor built into it provides a spark quench for your dial springs. When you're dialing the impulse springs tend to spark. Well if they spark too much they could distort and the contacts could get burnt away. So that's the purpose of the uh, the two capacitor. It's a very basic circuit. If we look under there, we have two coils there with a horseshoe magnet. There's the magnet, and that is the, your actual ringer. There's the old wire that goes to it, cotton covered wire. And that's, as I say, is your bell. And when the AC comes in to ring it, it causes the hammer to strike and operates, uh, um, hits the two gongs and you get the ringing. Right inside there is your contact springs which when you put the handset back, the circuit's broken, but as soon as you take the handset up, the circuit's made. It's very basic, but it does the job. It does the job. It's a metal case, completely metal, and uh, it's a nice it item to have in the, the collection quick release, no screws or anything on the side, a quick release and as I say either wall mounted or uh, uh, desk standing. So there we are, that's the Ericsson phone manufactured in Budapest around the 1920s, 24 from Hungary. Very nice and unusual phone. 
Anyhow, thank you for watching. Any comments, please make. Any questions, please ask. I haven't shown you the uh, the inside of the dial. It is pretty crude, but I had I had a I had a bit of a job with that. As I say, the finger stop, this part down here, was actually rubbing on the outer part of that. And also another thing to note, when you turn it, the numbers also go round, which is a little bit different. Normally the numbers stay still, but in this case, they turn round. Anyhow, once again, thanks for looking. Please subscribe. Any comments, please make. Any questions, please ask. Thank you again. Thank you.